Um, oh, we're going to take a quick break just for like, two, not a break, just a two minutes because um, we just need to grab a presentation. We misloaded it. So if you can just bear with us for a couple minutes, stick around. We'll get Alan's gray mold talk in two minutes. Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. Great. Well, you'll be familiar with our next speaker. We've got Alan again with how to control fungicide resistant botrytis in raspberry. So I'm going to start with a, a short history of resistance to botrytis in Washington. This, right now I'm just talking about raspberries. Um, I believe it's in the 90s they developed, uh, Botrytis developed resistance to Rovarol or Ipridione. They switched to Pristine, which is made up of Boscolid and Pyracostrobin. Uh, Switch, which is made up of Cyprodinil and Fluvioxanil, and Elevate, which, was, which is Penhexamid, and they use, use Captan. Um, I just want to mention Captan has some MRL issues. We have a, most places have a pretty high uh, tolerance or high MRL, but Canada has one of uh, five parts per million. For some reason, Canada thinks Captan is, is, is terrible. And these, these products, um, uh, Pristine, Switch, and Elevate gave excellent control. And they became the standards, were widely used. And then in 2012, uh, there was some control failures, some massive control failures. Uh, the story that I was told that there was a fieldman uh, in Whatcom County thought a raspberry harvester was on fire for this plume of smoke coming out. When he pulled up, it was the spores from botrytis that was coming out. The disease was, was so, so bad. Um, I have in here, Tobin Peaver started resistance monitoring. That's actually not quite right. Um, it was some uh, crop advisors from the co-op working with Syngenta, Chris Mertens, who sent samples down to Jim Abbott Scavage at University of California Riverside, did the sampling. I, 
is it 2012 or 2013, they, they did that work. Um, and then after that, Toe and Peaver came in and started resistance monitoring. And we found out that resistance was, was everywhere. I mean, like everywhere. And that uh, it was in most of the Whatcom County raspberry fields. Basically, every raspberry field with a history of the use of those products that had, had developed resistance. And later on, they looked in other places in Washington and in Oregon and found it there. Then we looked in blueberry, strawberry, and blackberry and, and found it in, in those crops. I mean, those crops use the same products. They're grown in proximity to, to raspberries. It's probably not surprising that we have resistance in all of those crops. In some, in some fields, Elevate was essentially useless. Um, for whatever the reason, um, Elevate seemed to be particularly susceptible for developing resistance. It might be, uh, or develop resistance against Elevate. It might be in part that the other two products are package mixes, but for whatever the reason, Elevate was, was useless. A group of us got together and said, we are just going to stop using Elevate in this county. And, and so we, we did, we didn't stop using the other products because we didn't have alternatives to switch to. Um, in some fields, Pristine was essentially uh, useless. And basically any place there had been heavy use of any of these three products, but tried to develop resistance. I'll show you some data later from a field where there was resistance I got resistance to all of these products in, in one, one field. Um, so we're losing or have lost our key, but try as fungicides. And so we have got to find some products with some uh, new modes of action. And we need to develop resistance management programs that can keep the products that we currently have. And I will tell you, Pristine Switch and Elevate still have a fit for some fields. Um, I would tell you, for example, Elevate Resistance is not that common in Skagit County because there hasn't been the history of use of Elevate in, in Skagit, uh, Skagit County. So the Washington Red Raspberry Commission is funding some field work. Uh, Tom Walters and I have been working together on this. We also work with uh, Tobin Peaver and his, his staff on this. Um, we did a very large Field trials, uh, 2016, 2017, over 30 treatments, six applications near Everson. We do this on, have been doing this for Rob, on Rob Dollywall's uh, work. Um, we've been having some low pressure. We use overhead misters to try and blow up some Botrytis populations. Hope, uh, uh, hope it doesn't get, doesn't get too bad. Uh, this is uh, Tobin and Tom when we're out sampling. This is 2016. Uh, you can look at Tobin there with a the little hand lens. Um, I can spot Botrytis uh, without a hand lens. But, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So anyway, that's us out, out sampling. Um, this is our, our sprayer. It, this is a, a research sprayer. We can use uh, multiple applications on here. Um, this is, we want to make sure that we get good coverage. So we have these uh, cards that turn color when moisture hits it. And you, you clip that onto the, the middle of the, in the middle of the canopy. And that makes, that tells us that we're getting adequate coverage. Uh, this is data from 2016. It just shows you the treatments, you know, PhD, Omega, Maribon, Luna Tranquility, Scala. Probably some products you haven't heard of. Um, these are, you know, the rates. Uh, we make six applications, the A, the B, application C, D, E, F applications. So there's a number of products and some also some numbered compounds that aren't on the, the market yet. And when you look at this, the, here, the higher the number, this is a percent of infected fruit. This is a feel, I'm not picking on Elevate, it just happened to be where we're doing the trial. Uh, I'm, the, I'm just reporting the, the news here. Uh, this is a field that's got some severe Elevate, and it wasn't statistic, statistically different from the untreated check, but it was, had more botrytis than the untreated check. And this is an example of a field that you would not want to be using Elevate in. It is essentially worthless in this field. If you look at what the most effective product of, it is Kinja. So that's a, a new product. Uh, here is o Omega, Maravon, uh, Topsin. That's an interesting one. Um, but here's Kenja with Kinetic, uh, with Kinetic is just a, a surfactant, uh, Luna Tranquility, here, here's Oso, 
Interesting enough, here's Elevate, but we have a tank mix with another product that we thought was going to be the Cat's Meow, and we had some pretty interesting results with it, and then the company decided not to commercialize the, that, that product. So uh, this is some interesting information. The thing that's a little disappointing is Kinja and Maribon are in the same class as Bosclid, but we already have resistance to, but they work on a resistant... Uh, but they, but this right now, they still will take out bosclid or uh, pristine resistant uh, botrytis. But Luna Tranquility is also in the same family, as, same group as, as pristine is. But Oso is a different mode of action. Topsin's a different mode of action, but it's not registered. So don't be thinking about that. So we got some, we got some very useful, very useful uh, data but disease pressure in raspberry was low in 2016 and we needed to test this in a heavy pressure situation 2016 didn't have enough pressure even with the overhead misters to try and blow it up so we convinced the raspberry industry to give us money for another year um oh before we get that way we did a botrytis trial on, on blackberry um this is uh, near mount vernon um we had botrytis in that field. Uh, we had a lot of botrytis. Um, and this was a field that had resistant to pristine switch and elevate, and interestingly enough, iprodione. So it had resistance. So um, this is, I can't remember, I think it's Chester. I think it's Chester. But it's one that comes on later in the season when it's cooled off, the range increased. And it's picked for a long time. It has had a lot of fungicide applications. So a lot of history of these products. And, uh, you know, this is what, this is what the, the Kinja treatment looked like. Uh, this is what the un untreated check looked like. And here, here's some, some data from here. Untreated check, 16% of the fruit had it in a, in a pretty heavy situation. But the Kinja did very well. Switch, not so good. Pristine, not good. And Endura, Endura is not registered, but Endura is straight boscolid. Pristine is, is boscolid uh, plus pyracostrobin. We wanted to see if what Endura alone would, would look like. But uh, Kinja gave really good control against in a field situation where there was resistance to, to boscolid. So in 2017, we doubled down, did two, two studies in raspberries. Um, you know, 27 treatments. I can hardly get them on a screen, but um, did some experimentals. We did some products that no one's ever heard of. Um, I was very interested in Fontellus. Nobody's here from DuPont. Fontellus is about ready to be registered if it hasn't been registered. Don, do you know by any chance, do we have a registration yet? It's coming before the next use season. So think about Fontellus. Um, um, we did, uh, so this is what we call an efficacy trial. So we take one product and we use it six times just to see how that product, that active ingredient works against ras uh, botrytis on raspberries. We had another trial that's a program trial where we came up with six applications that would have different modes of action. It's a, what we call the program trial because we put together groups of pro uh, programs. And we had 14 programs that we had. And these programs that we use covered all of the kinds of raspberry control programs. We had a cheap captain only one. We had the gold standard. We had a super resistant management, all these different programs. Plus we had some programs of things that we'd like the growers to try. Um, we, we started 10% bloom, 30%, 50%, first harvest, uh, second, all the way to mid, mid harvest. We had the surfactant in all of, the, all of our, our treatments. This is our application, same piece of equipment. Um, is Tom Walters here? Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. All right. Um, didn't want to give this talk if you weren't here, so in case you ask me a hard question. Um, but this is an example of the uh, of a, of one of the programs. This is kind of what we call the the high end one with lots of resistance management. We have Captan in with every treatment, so it's Captan Switch, next Captan Pristine, Captan Meteor. Meteor is uh, Iprodione. It's it's like it's like Roverol. 
Uh, then we went back to Captain Switch, um, <coughs> Captain PhD, and then Captain. There are six modes of action in, in this one. So there's a lot of efficacy and a lot of uh, resistance management in this, in this program. This is me sampling uh, this year. <coughs> um, now, bear in mind that Botrytis needs cool, wet weather to do well, which makes Whatcom County the perfect place for, for gray mold. This place is a festering cesspool of gray mold, except when I am doing uh, research. <coughs> it likes cool, wet weather. This is the orange bar is a 10-year average rainfall from April to June, and this is from a WSU weather station spitting distance from our research plots. And this includes 17, eight, uh, 17, 16, and 15, which had low rainfall. So this 10 years is lower than average 10. The blue is what we had for rainfall this year during the time of this trial. The other thing that really likes is cool weather. Um, the uh, Orange bar is the 10-year average. The first half of our trial season, it was 10 degrees above average. The second half is 15 degrees above. We could not have had poorer conditions for uh, botrytis. I mean, the weather just did not cooperate. Tom and I counted 8,000 damn berries. And how many did we get? Three. We had three berries out of 8,000 that had botrytis on it. I mean... I don't want to tell you how much money we spent, how much time we spent. I feel bad taking money from growers doing this work and having no botrytis. And we thought last year was a poor year. It was, I did not know what a non-botrytis year looked like until this year. And just to make this, make you feel more sorry for us, we had uh, two blueberry botrytis trials in Mount Vernon and had no, no botrytis there either. But we did have this. So this is yellow rust. And I don't know, we looked at things a little differently. We were thinking, thank God for yellow rust. Uh, so we took counts on yellow rust. We looked at 100 berries per, per plot. And the thing to keep in mind is we didn't apply anything for yellow rust. We applied products that were supposed to control, had the potential to control botrytis, and we did it at the timings appropriate for botrytis. We were not targeting yellow rust. We didn't see the yellow rust till late in, in the trial. So what I'm about ready to tell you is this. The, the, the problem, the question that we have here is, do applications for botrytis have value in controlling yellow rust on raspberries? Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is what uh, our data looks like. I don't know if you all can see this, but this is ranked from percent incidence. And we looked at, uh, I, said, uh, I said 100 berries. We looked at leaves. I don't know why. We looked at 100 berries then for the botrytis, but we went back and count, looked at leaves. So, um, so when I said we looked at 100 berries, that's true, but that's not what we did for the yellow rust. We, we looked at leaves. 16% of the leaves, 16% of leaves on the best treatment, which is Fontellus, 79% of the Roverall ones had uh, yellow rust. So if you want to look at what, what you can apply at Botrytis, uh, for Botrytis that will pick up yellow rust, it is Fontellus. That is a product that is going to be registered. And we had two, two rates of this. And they both came out very well. And we also, Oso. Uh, Oso is, um, and I'm not sure why, Oso is the same thing as PhD down here. It's a different formulation. I do not know why this formulation would do well and this one didn't. But again, that's what the numbers said. So... What we come away from on this trial is Fontellus Oso, there's a new product coming called Proline, has activity against yellow rust when applied for botrytis. So we snatched a little piece of victory from the jaws of defeat and got a little bit of useful information from this trial. 
Um, maybe this looks uh, better. This is um, this is this is the untreated check here. This is Oso, Fontellus, and Fontellus. I mean, they were they were noticeable standouts. We also have um, um, the the other trial. Uh, we, we took ratings on the other trial. Uh, this was uh, a program trial that had a lot of Fontellus and had a lot of the Oso in it as well. So this actually is the fifth year we have been doing work in this area. And despite what happened this year, we still have enough data that we, we have information on how to control botrytis and we have botrytis control programs that you can use. You can tailor for your export market, your history of, of resistance, your, depending on your budget, we can tell you how to do it cheaply. Um, I could tell you though, the more money it costs, or the cheaper it is, the less, um, the, the less protection that, that you buy. But if you're on a budget, we can tell you uh, how, how to do this. Also, it depends on your, maybe if you're going for just a, a process mark that's not IQF, you can tolerate a little bit more disease. We can tell you a program for that. If you need a perfect IQF berry and you have no tolerance for, for disease, we can tell you how to take care of that. And so we have maybe up to 12 or 13 programs uh, that I've only spent five minutes. Okay. So anyway, we're going to continue doing this. Uh, a couple things. Uh, Luna Tranquility got registered. Uh, Fontelis will get registered. Um, I just want to point out that Kinja, Luna Tranquility, and Fontelis are the same mode of action as as Bosclid, which is part of Pristine. It's group seven. So you don't rotate them with each other. Uh, right now, this is a more of a Whatcom County statement that I'm saying. Don't use Elevate. If you are outside of Whatcom County and you do not have a history of using Elevate, it's a fine product to use. Also, PhD and OSO are options. If you're not in a high pressure situation, I think it'd be an excellent tank mix partner and could serve as a captain substitute. So if you are going to Canada and you don't want to use captain, maybe you might throw in PhD or OSO. Um, I'm not really up right now on what the MRL requirement for some of these new products. Some of the new products, when they get registered, don't have all of their MRIs. Kinja has it for Canada, I think Korea and Japan. Um, but some of them don't have all of them. And so you might, you got to pay attention to MRL issues and maybe you use them for a pre-bloom application or a pretty season, a, a, a early season ap application. Um, you need to rotate to a different mode of action after one or two applications. There is nothing wrong with using the same mode of action back to back. You can do that, but if you use two applications back to back, you don't want to use it again for the rest of the season. So you, you have to rotate mode of action after one or two applications. Um, you can rotate with switch within the group seven products. You can use Roverall. Uh, if you don't have resistance to any of those and don't use more than one application of Roverall, what has happened when resistance, when resistance happens, it almost always comes with the fitness cost to the disease. And so they stop, growers stop using Roverall for, I don't know, 15 years. I don't know how long, but for a long time. And the frequency of the resistance gene went down in the population. It's still there. Uh, Tobin can find, Tobin, are we still arguing whether there's resistance or not? Or do you agree with me now? I didn't hear you. Can you say it a little louder? I, okay. We, we, we believe that the resistant gene is, is present in the population. Uh, it's at a low level. And so we think we can get away with one application of Roverall during the growing season, but it's a risky proposition to do more than that. Okay. So captain, okay. Captain is not the most, I just want to mention a few things about captain. It's not the most effective uh, botrytis fungicide but it's one of these products that's a multi-site uh, mode of action. 
So it makes it very difficult for Botrytis, well, so far it's been impossible for Botrytis to develop resistance against captain. To do that, it would have to simultaneously mutate against all of the multi-sites that, all the sites that it acts on, which is very hard for it to do. Um, we, but we think adding captain when using some of these other products is a very important resistance management technique. But if you're exporting to Canada, don't use it on your last two applications prior to harvest. Are there any questions? Tobin, do you have anything you want to clean up after me? All right. Say that in the microphone when you get up here. Um, any questions? Yes. You got to wait for the mic, please. So um, Olga's talk yesterday about- What's that? So Olga did yeah. a talk yesterday yep. about the spraying in bloom was not actually seemed to be the most effective. It's spraying when it was in fruit seemed to be more effective. And the other question is, um, you were mentioning we're using JEDAG with SWD and tank mi mixes that it sterilizes the fruit. Would it have a potential of helping with uh, gray mold as well, if that was the case? Okay. Your second answer, your second question is the easier one. And I believe it has a potential. Um, I don't like to stand up here in front of a group of people and say what I'm about really going to say, but I'm going, going to say it anyway. Cannabis growers cannot con can't talk to WSU. They can't get information from USDA. So I get phone calls from people in the cannabis community, and they're very restricted on the products that, that they can use. They have a very short list. And I can tell you that Jet Ag is commonly, commonly, commonly used successfully in the in cannabis production for control of botrytis and powdery mildew. Now, I do not have research data to do that, and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a second. But I know that that product has activity because there's a whole industry out there that's using a lot of it. The reason why I would not be a big fan necessarily of Jet Ag is this. Uh, generally, when people are making applications, they go in. We actually, actually, we do have some data on Jet Ag. Uh, but Jet Ag has zero period of residual activity. If you're going in every 14 days, Jet Ag is going to protect that plant for just a day or two. And the minute the spores start flying, it's going to go back. So it has a very short pigeon, a short period of act. Well, it has no, as soon as it's dried off, it's not doing anything. Um, when we're talking about using it for SWD, that's kind of a different mechanism. So it, it really is jet ag is, it's not going to hurt doing it, but it's not really going to help in response to your first question about Olga saying, I don't know if she exactly said, but she, muse she hypothesized that maybe you would not need that and my response I, I talked to her about this I said we're gonna have a throwdown and talk about that at a later time one year data it's one year data and that challenges what I say our dogma our belief system that has worked well for us and I'm not saying she's wrong I'm also saying I'm not convinced that she's right I would not skip practice of uh, two applications early on she also was talking about mummy berry i'm talking about botrytis no you're talking no you're talking about botrytis that's right I, that's right she was talking about botrytis um or we're okay we talking about mummy berry or botrytis right you're talking about okay all right um i would not pull my applications based on her presentation i'm not saying she's wrong but i don't know that she's right Okay, we're a little short on time, but we have one last question from Prosser. It is, has there been any documented resistance for the, to the fludioxinil portion of switch in Pacific Northwest berries? There has not been documented resistance to fludioxinil in botrytis anywhere in the world. My statement stands, whether it's yet or not. Um, 
there's, there's been no documented resistance. Uh, we know that it has activity against botrytis, but we have never tested it in the field situation because it is not commercially available as a solo product, or it's, it's not registered for this. I mean, it's commonly used. I mean, that's, um, um, I'm drawing a blank on what flu I'm, I'm using it. Um, no, no, no um, the solo product is Maxim in potatoes. It's Cannonball as a seed treatment. Um, I'm doing some research on, but it's not available to us to use in berries as a single active. All right, I gotta go. Thank you. We're going to a 15 minute break right now. We'll meet again at, oh, down to 10 minutes. We'll meet again at 2.45. This session was worth one pesticide credit. We have those on either end of the room. And also, if you have a survey, please, please, please turn it in to the back of the room. Thank you.